Welcome, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. This is absolutely wonderful. Such a wonderful topic indeed that it had to be shared with the body of Christ. It has to be shared with God's people. And that's why this video has had to happen. That's why we are here at this hour, at this time. So the family and I do a devotional titled Celebrate the Spirit-Filled Life by Brother Jack Hayford and Sam Middlebrook. Let me make sure that's correct here. I believe it's Sam Middlebrook. Yes, it's Sam Middlebrook from 1992. This is what it looks like here in the paperback edition. But nonetheless, these two devotionals from July 5th and July 6th, so the last previous two days, has been power-packed in the unity of God's people and worship and praise. With a sincere heart, of course, but nonetheless, this is something we need to take hold of grip fastly and tightly and know that our God means business when we see it manifested through his word and brought forth to us in such a way we cannot deny, we cannot deny the goodness of who God truly is and his being worthy to be praised. So if you could please join me as we do a couple readings here from July 5th and July 6th so that we may grow in faith, grow in spirit and in truth, and worship our Father God properly through Christ Jesus. Nonetheless, prior to diving into these two devotionals, I would love to pray that we would have discernment and not listen to what I say, what Brother Jack Hayford says here in, the written, in this written devotional, but what the Spirit of Almighty God says and is speaking to our hearts as He is ministering to us this day day. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you in Christ Jesus for the privilege to join together in this online community, for the privilege to come together at such a time as this to hear what you're saying to us. So we just pray for discernment. We pray that your word would be made clear to us today, that the truth would set us free that we would have greater understanding and wisdom as to knowing who you are to us and then the granted strength and power to apply it in our lives, Lord. We thank you for all these things, Father, in Jesus' mighty name and being. We praise you. Amen. So, we're going to start with July 5th. It's titled Christian Community, sorry, Christian Community Part 1. It goes as this, the scripture Breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. Acts chapter 2, verses 46 and 47. This is what Brother Jack Hayford has to say on this topic. The church of Jesus Christ may be defined as a worshiping community. One of the most fundamental and foundational acts of God's people is worship. Because God does what he does, saves, heals, restores, renews, refreshes, we do what we do, praise, adore, give thanks, worship. To the God who has called us to himself, we respond in worship, obedience, and service. In our relationship with God, we get our definition. We are the people of God, and because we are his, we worship. Hallelujah. By worshiping the one true God, we become true persons. By this act, we fulfill our ultimate destiny. Many aspects of this life will be left behind when we enter the next world, but one thing will remain. Through all eternity, we will continue to worship the Lord who redeemed us in love and his Christ who saved us by grace. Praise God, family. Praise God. Today, also, we commit ourselves to be people of praise. In doing so, we link ourselves with the worshiping community in this world and in the next. Amen. So that is Christian Community Part 1, July 5th of the Celebrate Spirit-Filled Life 365 Daily Devotional. So there's a lot to glean right there. 
we need be a people of praise and worship. But nonetheless, the Word of God speaks for itself. And Brother Hayford here did a great job of expositioning the Word of God there in Acts 2, 46 and 47. So we're going to move on now to part two of Christian Community for July 6th, which by the time this is posted, that will now have been yesterday. And we're picking right up back into verses 46 and 47 of the second chapter of Acts for Christian Community Part 2. Continuing, he says, the scriptures say, So continuing daily with one accord, praising God and having favor with all the people. Brother Hayford states this on the topic. The people of God worship, and when we do, when we do, we worship together. Thus, the church forms a worshiping community. Our primary meaning comes from our relationship with God as people who worship Him. But part of our meaning comes from our relationship with others as the community worships together. Our life together is based on shared worship. We discover that what is true of the whole church is true of all its parts. Each segment of the church gains its reality as community when its members worship. Husbands and wives find a new dimension of oneness as they worship together. Parents who pray with their children strengthen already existing ties. Small groups, committees, boards, and task forces move beyond the natural affinity in shared work to supernatural unity as they commit themselves to worship together. The choir preparing to lead the congregation in praise discovers a new measure of harmony when part of their preparation is shared worship. Thus, we gladly rejoice with one another and experience the tie that binds our hearts in Christian or Christ-following, children of God-honoring love. I added some wordplay at the last few moments there because the reality is we know the true, and that concludes the, the July 6th reading of Christian Community Part 2. These had a great impact on me and my house, me and my family, and I just wanted to share this with you, brothers and sisters, into the community that you would grow and see the greater ramifications and impact of oneness and peace with God's people. And worship is spirit and in truth. Jesus declares boldly through his word that the word of God itself is indeed spirit and life, spirit and truth. So we worship God through his word and join together in heart with Almighty God for what comes out of a man's heart or out of a man's mouth cometh from the heart. So the word of God is the revelation of the heart of God and we can join together in seeking after the heart of God in worshiping in spirit and and in truth. We need each other, friends. That's the greatest lesson I've learned recently in my life. But nonetheless, this is true for all of us. God emphasizes the importance of relationships from cover to cover, to community from cover to cover, from building upon our love for Him with our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and then our love for one another as we love ourselves. But we know from 1 John that we did not first love God, or our neighbor even, but God first loved us. And Jesus Christ is the embodiment of that love when He died upon the cross, shedding His blood and His life for the sins of all of mankind. Then on the third day, on Sunday, rising up, conquering sin and death, appearing to the masses and the multitudes as evidence and an example of the walking, live, resurrected Son of God, just before ascending back to the Father at His right hand in all power, glory, and majesty. He's coming again soon, my friends. So let us be cleansed by his blood. Let us know we're forgiven today. Let us cherish community. Let us cherish one another because we need each other. Why? God says we do. God says he delights in using us. God says he delights in speaking through us. God says he delights in joining us together to give him greater glory, to give him greater praise, to give him greater love. So let us be obedient to the Spirit, the Ruach Kodesh, the Spirit of God, through His Son, Jesus Christ, today, and join together in community. We'll see you next time, Lord willing. Until then, peace, grace, and mercy be with you all. I pray this was a blessing.
Amen.